examples and the domains in the new PMBOK guide. Okay. Uh, then we're going to delve a little bit also into PMBOK guide 7. Uh, and also throughout, I will be answering your questions. If you have a question, feel free to type the question into the chat. Uh, I'm monitoring the chat right now here. So I can I can see you just hop off. Uh, or just unmute yourself and, uh, and feel free uh, to ask uh, the question. I'm a bit hard of hearing, that's why I'm wearing these. So if I don't hear you at first, I just have to push up the volume. But, all right. And before we get started, uh, for PMI chapters, just a quick announcement: my company has a lot of free resources that we make available for PMI chapters. Examples, tips, project management podcasts, live stream presentations, infographics, free lessons. So if this is of interest for your chat, please do get in touch with me to provide this kind of information and content to you. Uh, I'm a former chapter president and I know how hard it sometimes can be to find good quality content to provide to chapter members. So please do reach out and we'll be happy happy to set you up with many of uh, the items that you see here. Before we get started with the PIM Talk Guide 7th edition, this is the one question that everybody asks me. My exam is soon, which PIMBOK version should I be using? Okay. Uh, so many people are preparing for the PMP exam, and because there is now PIMBOK 6 and PIMBOK 7 out, which one do I use? And uh, very quickly, uh, we'll get back to more details later on. Until January 31st, 2022, my recommendation is to use the book I position. Okay? Um, this is only a best guess because PMI has not officially made any announcements, but it is my best guess at the moment that, that you know, if they announced the day, they would probably say in February of next year, so three months from now, we're switching over to Pimbo Guide 7th edition. Uh, that's, that's why I give this recommendation. And now let's get started with the Pimbo Guide 7th edition. Uh, executive overview and first impressions. Here they are. Pimbok Guide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's officially called actually a guide to the project management body of knowledge, Pimbok Guide. It is a publication by uh, PMI, by the Project Management Institute, and it documents the standards and best practices for our field for our uh, field of project management. Versions 1 to 6, and you can see this here on the slide as well, we're very much focused on describing how a project is managed using processes. You can see that when you look at them, 37 processes, 39 processes, 49 pro processes. But now, starting with the 7th edition, PMI has completely gone away from that approach. So if you know any of the previous PIMBOK guides, forget everything you know. PIMBOK guide set edition consists of 12 principles and 8 domains. No processes, no knowledge areas, no, no, uh, no inputs, tools, techniques, all gone from the PIMBOK guide 7th edition. And here is why. PMI said, we want to go higher from um, the PIMBOK mindset is going to tell you the what of project management. What is important about project management? What should you do as you manage a project? And not how you should manage. Don't worry about the problem and the flow. We're giving you principles and we're giving you uh, we're giving you these performance domains. Uh, let me read you what PMI says here. Um, based on project managers across industries and around the world, we heard that there was room to improve the content and the structure to reflect current ways of working. Practitioners are now taught to identify the right delivery approach, whether it is predictive, adaptive, 
hybrid or, or a mix of those uh, to get the job done and to deliver the value. We decided to update the Pinbook Guide and bring it higher up in order to stay relevant and meet the needs of our customers. So PMI, we are PMI's company. So we want to need patches to do that. And here's what PMI did. What you see on this slide here is Pinbock Guide 6 edition on the left. Salmon, orange, what is the that's the Pinbock Guide 7th edition. The big difference is also that PMI flipped something around. On the left hand side, I don't know how many of you know this, but the Pinbock Guide is actually two dots. It's the ANSI standard. On the left, Pinbock Guide 6, the orangey looking color, that's the Pinbock Guide, and the white box, that is the ANSI standard. And then on the right side, on the Pinbock 7, the ANSI standard is now first, and the Pinbock Guide is second. And then at the bottom is something new that PMI is providing, and that is PMI standards plus a digital content form. So if you're looking for ITTOs, inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs from the Pinbook Guide 6th edition, they are now in standards plus. Okay, a little uh, a close up. Again, this is uh, Pinbook Guide 7th edition. So at the top, we have the ANSI standard. The ANSI standard now consists of 12 principles. And the Pinbook Guide now consists of eight performance mains, that is part two of the book. And there are also appendices, a glossary, an index, uh, other things. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, later on. Okay, here is the same, used slightly different, okay? At the top, we have these 12 principles, and at the bottom, we have the eight performance domains. The principles, they are guiding us. So they are the underlying principles of how we should be doing uh, product management, giving us the, the I don't want to say ethical because that's different, but giving us the foundation, professional foundation of the decisions that we need to make for managing projects. And this then guides how we implement and the performance to make. And EPMI says there is no really a, not really a process in how this works. You know, we have, uh, you know, we have planning, uh, initiating planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling in Pinbock Guide 6th edition. We have nothing like that in the Pinbock Guide 7th edition. But allow me to zoom in here. And if you know the plan, do, check, act, uh, act cycle, then uh, look at it this way, you know, at the top we have stakeholders and teams, right, and and selecting the the development approach, that's it's kind of the planning, uh, there's also planning around five o'clock, then there is the project work at the bottom, kind of doing, right, and delivery, that's also doing, then we have measurement, that's check, and then we have uncertainty act kind of so we have the plan to check act cycle maybe kind of hidden in the uh in the these eight performance domains i'm pretty sure pmi didn't mean that uh, but it's kind of my way of, of of helping myself visualize how this can work where do you get the pinbook guide well you can buy it here by going to PM Prep Castle. That's just a straightforward link to take you to Amazon where you can get it. Or obviously, if you are a member of PMI, and assuming that you are a member of the Vietnam chapter, you are a member of PMI, you can simply go to the PMI website and download your PDF copy. But you can't print it. As with previous versions of the Pimple Guide, you cannot print it. So you have to actually buy a printed version uh, that you're going to get. Now, here's the thing. This is the Pinbook Guide 6 edition, and you know how, th how thick this is, right? This is humongously thick. Now, the 7th edition is much smaller. This is all the old Pinbook Guide. So maybe a third, right, of the 6th edition, right? So that's it from a high-level overview. Let's take a look at the two parts. So we've seen that the, 
the, the pinball guide consists of the standard and the pinball guide itself. And in the standard, it has two main sections. It talks about the system for value delivery and the most principles. Let's take a look at those two uh, sections within the standard. Uh, first of all, the system for value delivery. When I first saw this, all oh, TMI is, is, is introducing here, not really anything new, to tell you the truth, because the system for value delivery is literally the way that you and your organization deliver projects. We have a small company, we have individual projects. That's my value delivery system. We do one project after the other. Another pro company may have programs and portfolio and sub-programs and then it's more complex. That's their system for value delivery. So this is how we in our organization have project management set up, how we use projects to deliver value to the customer who orders this. So it's really nothing big uh, that that we have here, but it, it, bears, it bears keeping in mind that yeah, you have to somehow structure how you project manage. And obviously operations there at the bottom. In the end, your project needs to stop and it has to have a finish. And then you hand it over to operations, right? And then you start earning the value, okay? Um, there is also one other thing that when you look at the 12 principles that PMI has in the in the new Pinbok guide. You're they, they kind of remind you probably of the ethics that are in the PMI code of ethics, uh, the four values that we have in and honesty. And when you compare those over uh, to the Pinbok guide, you're kind of wondering, well, is this the same? Is this just another form of ethics? No. Uh, PMIC are aligned with the four values in the Code of Ethics, so the Pinbok Guide and the Code of Ethics are aligned, but the, the 12 principles, they don't follow the same format. They are, they are not duplicates, instead they are complementary. Okay? The four ethical values, they are supposed to give us moral guidance to do the right thing. Whereas the 12 principles in the PINBOK guide, they give us professional guidance in regards to you, to how do you effectively, okay? So there's a big difference there, moral guidance from the F code of ethics and professional guidance from the code, uh, from the, the 12 principles from the PINBOK guide. There is also another overlap, and that is the overlap with general project management. So you have project management principles on the one side, and you have general management principles on the other side. And for example, the primary goal on both sides is to deliver value. Project management does it slightly different than general management. For example, we use projects versus operations, but the overarching goal is the same. So yes, there is a certain overlap. All right, now you kind of get the idea of, of what these principles are and where they fall. Let's take them, right? There are 12 of them. I'm not going to take a deep dive into each of these. This is more a high level overview. So let's go through the first six here. Be diligent and respectful. Basically what PMI says here is, your company is entrusting you with resources. Make sure that you use those resources appropriately. Okay. Number two, create a collaborative uh, project team environment. The better team environment you provide, the more effective your team will be and the more successful your project will be. I mean, we've learned this again and again. We've seen this again and again. Principle number three is effectively engage with stakeholders. Note that here it says engage with stakeholders. It doesn't say effectively manage your stakeholders because 
frankly, you, your stakeholders are probably managing you on a project. Uh, so you have to engage with them. You have to bring them into the project. You have to make sure that they support the project and work with you on the project. So that's your job as a project manager, as a project leader. Then obviously, you want to focus on value. If you uh, are, are familiar with the Agile principles, Agile is very much focused on value, delivering value, quickly delivering value, making sure that you deliver the value that the customer expects and it's the right value. So principle number four here in the PIMBOK guide, this is clearly a nod to uh, Agile project management where, uh, where we want to deliver value soon and that we deliver the correct value. Okay. Then number five, recognize, evaluate, and respond to system interactions. In both PIMBOK 5 and PIMBOK 6, boxes and the knowledge areas and the domains, but they were all in neat little boxes, right? And it looked like everything was, was really separate. And that's why, if you remember from, from those two uh, pinball kites. Like, that's not the way it is, right? It's not these individual boxes that are all separate. This really interacts. This is like a big city with roads and buses and cars and pedestrians and nightclubs and shopping malls. You know, everything interacts with each other. So you have to understand and and react to how your project system if you if you change something over here maybe something over there will break okay so you have to recognize this understand this and and work though that you have to demonstrate leadership behaviors until about pinbok guide fifth edition pmi was mostly talking about project management and then in about 2016 project leadership began, began to enter the realm of PMI. PM, uh, PIMBOK Guide 6th edition already started talking about leadership and the more you get to PMA, the more you will hear PMI talk about leadership. And this is clearly uh, the, the culmination of this. One of the 12 principles in the PIMBOK Guide 7th edition says, you have to be a leader. You can't just be a project manager you have to be a project leader in order to manage your project properly. Right, these are the first six principles. I haven't seen any questions coming in yet. Please don't be shy. If you have any questions or comments, type them into, type them into the chat or just speak up and uh, we'll get a conversation here. What is the need for the change? Uh, uh, three, th I think this is uh, very early on, uh, we went through that, where PMI said that they felt that it was necessary to do this because we as project managers and as project leaders, we are now much more involved in other areas of the project as well. For example, selecting the correct methodology. The PIMBOK 5 and 6, they were almost a little bit of a methodology and PMI did not want to produce another methodology book. They wanted to at a leadership level at a higher level. With PIMBOK Guide 7th edition, you can now manage uh, hybrid projects, agile projects, uh, waterfall type projects. This is the idea. So bring the PIMBOK guide higher up so that we project managers, we project leaders have a document that allows us to manage any type of project, no matter what the methodology is. At it is you here. Let's look at number seven. Tailor based on the context. This is one of the principles where PMI clearly says you need to tailor your project management approach to the needs of your project. We'll talk a little bit more about tailoring later on. Build quality into processes and deliverables. Do it right the first time is, is always been a tenet of project management. And here yeah. quality is built in from the very beginning. If you have quality processes and quality deliverables, then, you know, your project is bound to be a success. Navigate complexity. Uh, this is once again uh, the thing that your project, even the smallest project, is complex. And there are so many moving parts, and you have to understand those moving parts, and you have to be 
able to navigate that properly. Number 10, optimize risk responses. I did an interview with Dr. David Hilson. He's, he's known as the risk doctor a few years ago. And he said, you know, the one thing that product managers are really good is planning about for risk management and getting everything ready for risk management, but where they fail is actually doing something about the risk once they apply. They forget about the risk responses. And I think number 10 here principle is a strength from conversation. We project managers need to do more about responding to risk. We can't just, you know, make a risk register and have a risk assessment. What about when something actually happens, we've got to do something about it. And this is what this clearly states. Optimize your risk responses. Number 11, again, is a nod to agile project management. Agile project management says you have to quickly adapt, you have to change, you have to be resilient, you have to build fast, you have to fail fast, you have to accept your failures, and you have to learn from them and change and move forward in order to deliver. The sooner you fail, the sooner you can deliver something that's actually required by your customer. And last but not least, number 12, enable the change to achieve the envisioned future state. Uh, I did an interview all oh, about six or eight weeks ago. Oh, what was his name again? I forgot. He is a change management specialist. And while we were doing that interview on the Project Management Podcast, we asked, you know what? The one thing that I, as a project manager and product leader, have not really been all that good about was change management. You know, I've done my project, I've had and preparation, but really all that well. So my focus was really not on implementing the project in production. It was more delivering the project and ending the project, but making sure that that the change management portion is done as well. That was always a little bit left behind. So to me, having this here as the 12th principle is a good thing because we as project managers have to think beyond the project and say, okay, what is going to change as we implement these projects? Okay, so this is, for, this is it for those 12 principles. Let's open one up and take a look a little bit into, uh, thank you, uh, let, uh, look into uh, what one of these looks like. So this is the opening for each of these principles. There is this graphic, this, this box that they have. On the left-hand side, is a quick definition of what this is all about. Leadership, uh, demonstrate and adapt leadership behaviors to support individuals and team needs. It's basically the definition of what EMI says leadership is. And then on the right side, those individual bullets, they are really sort of a, a, a summary of what comes next, right? What the next few pages are. And what do we have? Um, what your product have about product management? It's called the Project Management Podcast, believe it or not. The Project Management Podcast. That's that's what it's what it's called. It was the first one, so <laughs> I could take the name. Uh, all right, so this is what leadership looks like in the Pinbok Guide. It's only three pages long. Right? So it's an exact yeah. overview of what PMI says leadership is, right? Uh, for example, uh, vision leads to better outcomes. Uh, leadership is not exclusive to any given role. So it's just my role as a product leader to lead its other people's roles as well. The sponsor has to lead. Even somebody who's just in quality assurance or a designer, they have to help lead as well. PMI is the responsibility to make sure that that you know, conflict gets addressed, and also that leadership is not authority, right? And they also talk about adaptive leadership. You have to make sure that you know you have to adapt it to the person that you're leading or to the circumstances. And they give a few examples of good leadership as well. Now, the one thing that I didn't see is remember we have twelve principles, right? And each of these principles is described in the way that we have just talked about. So you know, there's this box here, right? And then on a few very small pages, they describe what the 12 principles are. They have not tried to codify it. 
So the, you know, in, in the Pinball Guide 6 edition, each knowledge area, we have inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs. Not the same here with these 12 principles. Each principle is described on its own merits, okay? There are no similar aspects or similar perspectives or points of view that PMI is trying to, to shoehorn these into. No, leadership is described one way and risk is described in a completely different way. And for example, risk is barely a little bit longer than a page. So risk management is a page and a little bit in the pinbook eye. That's it. That's all you're getting for risk management. So my translation here, what PMI says about this is, uh, as a product leader, you have to help your team members understand what the vision and the mission is and where they fit into the project. So I'm a QA person. What is my role? Why am I here? Right. That is my job as the leader to tell this QA person and to give them the vision and show them how valuable they are. Uh, it's also leadership by example, right? If I want an open culture in my team, then I need to be the culture that I am, right? And I need to be mentoring colleagues, right? I myself have to mentor others and help them to become leaders, and I have to encourage them to mentor their colleagues as well. So that is what good leadership is all about. Okay, so that's it for the uh, first part of the PIMBOK guide, those 12 principles with looking at leadership one. So we have that there on the left, PIMBOK guide on the right. We've looked at the system for value delivery and I've given you a high level overview of what these 12 principles are all about. Now, let's go into the PIMBOK guide. Remember, this was the ANSI standard for project management. On the PIMBOK guide, we talk about these eight performance domains. Then we talk about tailoring. So something that PIMBOK guide sixth edition started talking about is now its own, uh, is now its own uh, chapter within the PIMBOK guide. And then because we project managers, we always want hard tools, right? So PMR has accepted that and they do give us a few models methods and artifacts, but it's a really, really short chapter there. All right, let's jump into this. On the a performance domains, okay? Uh, PMI says, and I'm gonna read this again so I get this right, a performance domain is a group of related activities that are critical for delivery of product outcomes. These performance domains are interactive, interrelated and interdependent areas of focus that work in unison to achieve the desired project outcome. Okay, So the principles that we just looked at, they give you professional guidance on how you... Uh, we got a comment there. I think there should have been a balance between leadership and project management because if only leadership, the team cannot gain the project goals. I totally agree with you. In fact, uh, I mentioned David Hilson earlier on, and he said back, back then, he said he doesn't like the fact that PMI is focusing so much on leadership because, like you said, if there is only leadership, who's actually going to do the work? I think you may have gotten the wrong impression. When I looked at leadership a moment ago, that's just one of 12 things, right? I didn't look at any of the other 11. Right? And if you look at the other 11, they give you guidance on how to manage a project. And these eight performance domains here, they do talk about a little bit about the what, uh, excuse me, a little bit about how. It's still a lot from management of what do we need to do and less of how do we do it. There's a little bit of how in these here. All right, so we got these eight performance domains, uh, the stakeholder management, team, project performance planning, project work, delivery, measurement, and uncertainty. I'm not going to go into these all in detail, but you can kind of see how this gives you a good understanding of 
what a project is all about and what you need to do. Like I said, there is no circle. There's no plan, do, check, act in this. There is no method behind it. There is no initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, and closing, right? There is no agile cycle here. This is really just the performance domains. These are the areas that we need to work on, right? So the principles that we look at, they tell us how to behave, and these eight performance domains tell us what we need to do in these areas that are very important for management. Okay. Um, the eight performance domains, the text that you get, and here you get a lot of uh, a lot of more text than you get with the principles. Like I said, risk pages, right? So very short. With each of these. Uh, performance domains, you get three to ten chapters. You get an overview graphic. We'll see that in just a moment. The text is engagingly written. If you've read the Pinball Guide 5th edition, you probably fell asleep. If you read the Pinball Guide 6th edition, you thought, okay, that's a little bit better, but it's still very, very dry and boring. And Oh, my God. Uh, Pinball Guide 7th edition is actually engagingly written. It's still a textbook. Right? It is still an ANSI standard, and it is still the description of these domains. It's still a bit dry, but it's engaging, and I don't want to say entertaining, but at least you won't fall asleep. Right? That's, that's, the, that's the good news here. So let's take a look at one of these performance domains. Again, this is just one of eight. Um, I like the fact that they're doing this. Okay. So we have these 12 boxes for the 12 principles, and we have these eight boxes for the eight performance domains because it gives you a high-level overview of what we have. On the left-hand side, it gives you a, a quick summary of what the team performance domain does. It addresses activities and functions associated with the people who are responsible for producing project deliverables that realize business outcomes. So if you read that, you have a good high-level understanding of what this performance domain is all about. Now, remember, in the 12 domains, I said on the right-hand side, that's just a summary of what's coming, right? That's just a summary of the a bullet point of what what the text is about. This is different. This tells you here, if you do the team performance domain right, these are the results. If you do the team performance domain right, you have shared ownership of the project. Your team will be a high performance team, and so on. And in each of these eight domains, PMI tells you what the result is. So if you did the domain correctly, these are the results. Okay. All right. Here you go. These are the uh, the chapters that PMI has. Uh, it talks about project team management and leadership. It talks about project team culture. It talks about high performance le uh, teams, leadership skills, tailoring leadership styles, and interaction with other domains. Okay. And by the way, remember I said each of the performance domains was just described, excuse me, the, the power principles, described on its own merit, okay? Here it's the same thing. Each performance domain is described on its own merit. So the first two, four, six, the first six bullet points here are, are different for every single performance domain. The last one, checking results, is the same for all of them except for the life cycle. And in the life cycle, they call uh, checking results, measuring outcomes. Not sure why. Okay, And so for each of these performance domains, they go much more into detail. Usually one of these chapters is one to three pages long. So you get anywhere from 20 to 30 pages in, the, uh, in uh, the description there. All right, that's it for these eight performance domains. And once you read these is, frankly, it stays relatively high, right? And I was thinking to myself, man, there's got to be more, 
right? Is this all there is? Really? Uh, is that all you have to say about team performance? Could we please get a little bit more hands on? Give me a few more tools. Tell me how to do this. And, and obviously, you know, this is not what PMI wanted to do. PMI wanted to stay high level on the what needs to be done and not on the how it needs to be done. If you are an experienced project manager, that's okay. But if you are a junior project manager, somebody who's just starting out in project management, you're going to be a bit lost because you really don't know how to do this. Because this, this talks primarily about the what, not about the how. That, however, that is an opportunity for training companies, right? Now we, me as a training company, we can teach newcomers more about the how of project management because the PIMBOK guide does not address it. All right, that's it for these eight performance domains. Let's talk quickly a little bit about tailoring here. Uh, tailoring, in tailoring, PMI talks about tailoring the life cycle, development approach, processes, engagement, tools, methods, and artifacts. Basically, what PMI is trying to get across here is no project is the same as another project. You cannot just, you know, I'll put it into a box and say, this is our project management methodology, do this. I used to work for a bank here in the United States, and excuse me, uh, this bank, they had a project management methodology, and every project would have to do it exactly the same way. And I kid you not, I printed out the templates for this, and it was 500 pages long. So they wanted every single project to fill in the same first, which was 500 pages printed, double-sided, by the way. <laughs> so it was ridiculous, right? And with this tailoring, PMI now says, you can't do that. You have to adjust your project management approach to the, uh, to the, um, to the needs of your project. One thing that I did before I uh, created, the, uh, let's see, we have a question coming in. How will the exam be expected to change currently more from situation or from how? Um, we'll get to that when we talk about the exam later on uh, in just a moment, in just a minute, okay? And one question I got one of my uh, students was this. Will PMI expect practitioners to reference both the sixth and the seventh uh, edition of the PIMBOK guide in their job? Or do they plan to publish a new companion to the seventh edition with all the processes? Uh, let me answer the second one. No, there will not be a companion. The PIMBOK guide seventh edition is it. There will not be a companion to how to implement it. The how to implement it is Scrum, Agile Project Management, Rational Unified Process, some, some uh, waterfall type project management methodology. That's how PMI, the PMBOK guide, tells you about the what. Okay? But what is PMI expecting you to do? Well, the answer is quite simple. PMI expects you to tailor a development approach to your organization's needs and your project's needs. And here is how PMI tells you to do this. Okay, So first of all, on an organizational level, okay, you select initial development approaches that are right for your business. Right? Oh, we do agile, we do hybrid, we do waterfall. Here are the three that we use. Right? You then adjust them, that's step two, you tailor them for the organization. You don't just do Scrum, period. You do Scrum the way you do Scrum. You adjust it to the needs of your organization. Now it's Scrum for your company. Okay, now you start a project. Does Scrum for your company work? Well, no, we have to tailor it. We have to adjust it a little bit for the project. And then as you continue to do this Scrum project in your area, you realize, oh no, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. You keep adjusting, you keep inspecting. Right? That's kind of neat. Uh, I think we need to have knowledge about Pinbox 6 or have experience about Pinbox 6 to understand Pinbox 7. Is that correct? Yes, indeed. 
Yes. PMI clearly states at the beginning of pin box seven, pin box six isn't wrong. This is still correct. Everything that we said in pin box six is still correct and applies to projects today, except now in pin box seven, we've gone higher up. We're telling you the what, we're no longer telling you the how. Models, method, artifacts in the guide, right? Uh, this is really, uh, the section does not focus on anything at all. Pinbox 7 does not talk about Agile, does not talk about Scrum, does not talk about any methods. That was a question that we had. Models, methods, artifacts, and guides, that's another chapter within the Pinbox Guide 7th edition. It's a brief description of commonly used models method, uh, the Tuckman um, model of team development, estimating tools, meeting event tools, things like this. But we're talking uh, two to three lines, right? So it, it's not it's not even a full paragraph. It's two lines. It's one line sometimes. So this is the Pimbok I sixth edition in just a few pages now in the Pimbok I seventh edition. Wait, got another question. There is no ITTO, so do the students have to study about ITTOs to an exam? This is something we do not yet know. PMI has not yet mentioned anything officially about that. Okay. Uh, right now, I have suggested until January of next year, January 31st, study the sixth edition. If, if you study the seventh edition, it's okay. It doesn't. It's not going to make you fail the PMP exam. It's just at the moment the Pimbok Guide seventh edition is not yet in the uh, is not yet an official reference list of the PMBOK I, uh, the PMP exam. And um, then there are select apprentices, uh, appendices, not apprentices. Um, appendix X2, the sponsor, appendix X2, and also the product is part of the appendices. For example, almost 10 years ago, I developed a PMP exam simulator. We're still up in. Is this still a project? <laughs> We're calling it a project internally. We've been working on it for 10 years. It doesn't seem to stop. When does a project end? When does it become a product? When does it become a program? This is what this particular appendix discusses, right? The difference between product, project, and continuous projects that are just never ending, like my exam simulator. Uh, can we say that Pinbok Guide 7 is a supplement? No, definitely not. The Pinbok Guide 7th edition is on a completely different level than the Pinbok Guide 6th edition. Pinbok Guide 7th edition tells you what you do for project management, whereas Pinbok Guide 6th edition tells you how you can do a project if you choose to follow this framework. I spoke to another one of my students, and this student asked me this here. Do you think that the sixth edition was more equipped in making a person do practical hands-on stuff? Spoiler alert, yes, that's what I actually think. Sixth edition enables a person to visualize like where to start his stuff at the workplace. Honestly speaking, companies still ask a new or experienced project manager to develop cost, schedule, scope, all of that, right? But not the principles mentioned in the seventh edition, right? But what do you think about this? Well, let me give you my overview here. Okay. Right now, the slide is empty. So let me bring this in, right? I, I really feared that, that when I first heard about PMI at the Pinbok Guide 7th edition. This is what I asked myself, right? This question here. Wait, what, what about all the, the, the detailed work that we need to do? Uh, this is now the situation that I think we find ourselves in. Uh, first of all, pointing, uh, there are five slides, five uh, arrows coming in here, uh, going around, okay? Uh, pointing to the top, the Pinbok Guide 7th edition has 12 principles and eight domains, performance domains, okay? These are brand new. We have never heard about these previously. They are new, not new inventions, but they are new buckets, 
word that PMI has chosen to put project management into. Then pointing to the right side towards two o'clock is the PMP exam content outline. The PMP exam content outline has three domains, people, process, and business environment. They are totally different from the eight domains in the PIMBOK Guide 7th edition. Okay, so we have a divergence here. PIMBOK Guide 6th edition, pointing to the bottom right there, uh, has five domains, 49 processes, and knowledge areas. How many were there? Nine knowledge areas, I believe, right? Totally different. Does not relate to PIMBOK 7, does not relate to the ECO, Pinbox 6 is standing on its own. Totally. Then PMI has developed their own training for the PMP exam. Okay, five topics are part of that that uh, that training, unrelated again to anything except maybe topic number five matches domain three of the ECO somewhat, but it is completely different again. So pointing into a different direction and then he stands the new digital platform that they have created again pointing into a completely different direction and to me frankly the pimba the, the standards plus website it is very difficult to navigate i cannot find anything on there i hope they make it more user friendly that's kind of where i'm going with this as well so i think this is the current situation that we find ourselves in and this is the confusion that I have, that men have pushed into different directions, and there seems to be no nothing that brings it together. And PMI, in my opinion, has not done a very good job in explaining my to different directions. They're just letting us fend for ourselves. All right. That's it kind of for my overview of the Pinbock Guide seventh edition. Uh, part two of this is talking a little bit about the PIMBOK Guide 7th edition and how it affects the PMP exam and PMP exam prep. Most important statement, the PMP exam is not a test of the PIMBOK Guide. Instead, the PMP exam is based, the questions on the exam are based on the exam content outline. Okay. The PIMBOK guide is only one of 10 reference books. Okay? On the left-hand side is the PMP exam. It is based on the exam content outline. And the exam questions are based on what the exam content outline says. And then when an exam question is developed, the team goes to the right and says, okay, what was the guide? or nine other books say what the correct answer should be. That's how these questions are developed. So it could very well be that there is a question on the exam that looked right. There are nine other reference books that this may be used, uh, that this question may be based on. That's an important thing, an important picture to remember reference books. An important one, Hello, boy. but only one of 10. Hmm. Now, let's take a look. At recommended study materials. Now, 2021 and probably until about January. Best guess at the moment because PMI has not made any official announcement. Okay, so I'm now pushing it into general until January of 2022. Use, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, use the exam content outline. Know and understand the exam content outline. Use the PMBOK Guide 6th edition. That's what you need to study. And use the other reference books if you have them. There is no need to buy them, right? But if you happen to have one of those other reference books, fine. Take another look at it, read it, uh, study it, learn from it. And then in about February of 2022, by then, I hope PMI has made it clearer and made an official statement. So best guess, you still need to know the exam content outline. You're probably going to have to know the PIMBOK Guide 7th edition. You're probably going to have to use PMI Standards Plus and the other reference books. This is best guess because no real information from PMI. 
Okay, it's really difficult to speculate what PMI is doing and when PMI is going to doing something because their communications have not been all that great recently about what they're doing and when they are coming out. Now, let me give you a few ideas about how to properly prepare for your PMP exam. This slide is empty at the moment, so there's nothing there. At the foundation of your PMP exam preparation is your experience as a project manager. You have to have at least three systems of experience. So that's outside, that's below the slide, if you wish. So go, go underneath it. And then on top of that, once you have these 36 months, you're going to want to take the exam course, okay? You need at least 35 hours of training. So that's what this course is going to give you. Together with this course, you're also going to to eat exam content outline, okay? And the exam content outline is important because that's what the PMP exam is all about. You don't play chess without understanding the rules. The exam content outline is the rules of chess. Well, the rules of the PMP exam. But you understand what I mean. Then, on top of that, you're going to have to study the PMBOK guide and the APG. And the APG is this here. Wait, I'm showing it right now. I'm going to have a sticky note on it. There we go. It's this here, the Agile Practice Guide. Okay. This is a very thin book, very well written actually, I like this. It comes together with the Pinbook Guide 6th edition, so if you purchase the Pinbook Guide printed 6th edition, then you have, you have uh, the Agile Practice Guide as well. It's also in the PDF document. So if you have a Pinbook Guide 6th edition PDF, go to the back, you'll find the Practice Guide there. So you definitely want to read that. Because Scrum is a dominant on the PMP exam. Many, many students tell me there were questions about come on, you want to read the Agile Manifesto and the Scrum Guide. And then to bring all of this together, you definitely want to use a PMP exam simulator in order to take everything that you have, your experience, what you have learned, what you've read in the books, and bring this together to these questions. And this takes me back to the question uh, that uh, somebody asked about uh, scenario-based questions. Right, okay. So uh, that was Tritran who asked that. How will the exam be expected to change currently more from situational questions, more from uh, we really don't know, okay? We expect that PMI will continue to have situational questions in there. We are right now starting to develop questions that are based on, on the PIMBOK guides. Not based on, right? So we ask questions that are based on the exam content outline and use PIMBOK 7 as the official reference. So we're starting to develop that. We're, we're, we're walking blind. We have no idea what we're doing because no information from PMI would best guess what we expect PMI will be doing based on our experience. Okay. There was also a question that says, what benefit could we get from Pinbox 7 that we can't from Pinbox 6? Pinbox 6 is really down in the how. How do we manage projects? Pinbox 7 is more about the what. What do I need to understand about proper project management on the strategic level, on an executive level? That's what you get more from the Pinbox 7th edition. And I think that what is also going to flow into here, right? So once we have a better understanding of how PMI changes the PMP exam going forward, what, how they are asking those questions, we can then adjust the recommendations, the training, and teach students better to prepare for the PMP exam there. Okay. Um, for students to take action and um, look for reputable sources and experiences yes PMI does have the ATP program um, but you don't have to do it because PMI requires you to be in a classroom five days in a classroom if you don't want to be in a classroom fine find a training provider that offers that's outside of the ATP program that offers recorded training 
uh, you need to take at least a 35-hour PMP exam prep course. I say minimum 35 hours because, frankly, if you look at everything, yeah, you don't see my arm. Right? It's, it's really a lot of what SFMI has put into the PMP exam. 35 hours to me is the minimum. You cannot put all that information into 35 hours. It is simply impossible. Because of that, I say, if you have a 35 hour long course, you have to think about maybe three to five weeks of self-study, right, after that. And I also have certain guidebooks right now that we all offer so that done with your course you're kind of like yeah now what how do i go from here to the exam and this is where our guide books come in use an exam simulator this here is a link to my exam simulator pmexamsimulator.com but please there are other companies that offer it uh rmc read OK companies pm training offers it dan ryan offers one so there are many pm exam simulators out there Pick the one that meets your budget. Pick the one that meets your needs, right? Of course, I would appreciate buying my, you buying my simulator, but I want to make sure that it meets your needs and that you pass the exam. And then, take your exam. That sounds really simple. But frankly, if you follow this approach here and you do everything right and you use an exam simulator and you study hard and you, you put in those three to five weeks of the for everything then many of my students say you know the, the, the exam it was just like taking another exam in your simulator in the end right so if you really put your mind to it you study then you can definitely do this we have about 50 people on this call i'm pretty sure that many of you are bored by now it's like yeah i've already pp certified i don't need to know all of this but you may be interested in knowing where you can earn PDUs. I mentioned earlier on that I have the Project Management Podcast. I have been doing the Project Management Podcast since 2005. And I have over 500 episodes of interviews with project managers from all around the world. And if you go to pmpodcast.com slash PDUs, you can get these podcast interviews for free. There is a paid version, but 90% of the interviews that I have are completely free. You don't have to pay. Payment is for people who really want to support me, right? That, that's, that's what I've done it for. But you do not have to pay for the Project Management Podcast. So you can get 60 totally free PDUs by uh, going there. Yeah, and that's it for me today. But let me close with this here. Here. This is uh, Lord of the Rings. This is the actor Sean Bean. Normally, he says one does not simply walk into Mordor, uh, but today, uh, in honor of the Pinball Guide, he says one does not simply invent the Pinball Guide. And that's it for me today. Thank you very much, everybody. Do we have any further questions? Uh, can we have? Uh, uh... Uh, sorry, before the question, can you close for the chapter's uh, reference? Do you mind? Hello? Um, could we have a quick what? A quick photo of captures of the you. Cornelius. section today. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I still didn't understand you. Herbert was just talking over you there. Uh, yeah, Hi. thank you, Cornelius. I enjoyed so much. All right, uh, thank you, Herbert. It was a great thank breakfast, sir. Thank you for your information and sharing today. So uh, can we have a quick, uh, uh, before the Q&A section, can we have a quick uh, pictures? Of course. Chapter member reference. Thank you. Anh nhá. Anh Hải ơi, chứ nhờ anh Hải chụp nhá. Uh, everyone, uh, mọi người có thể uh, bật uh, camera lên không ạ? Uh, okay, okay. Nhờ anh Hải nhá. So please turn on the camera, please. Thank you. Anh Hải, khi nào OK thì bảo mọi người nhé. I'm ready. OK rồi đúng không ạ?
Cảm ơn mọi người rất nhiều. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions, I think. Uh, so this I'm very uh, welcome to. I mean, thank you so much for your uh, your sharing today. It's very useful. I have my uh, PMP last year. Yeah. And compared to a different, different actually. So but it's quite interesting. Thank you. Yeah, it has changed quite a lot. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your kind words.